Are you the owner of a 2018 Nissan Leaf who's noticed that their car doesn't charge all that quickly from a rapid charging station if the weather is a little hot and you've already rapid charged at least once in the same day? Have you heard about the now infamous rapid gate problem and been put off by a Nissan Leaf because you fear spending hours at a rapid charger? A few weeks ago, we heard that Nissan has changed some of the software in more recent examples of the 40 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf to eliminate the effects of RapidGate. Now it turns out that Nissan has issued a software update that can be applied to all 2018 Leafs by a certified Nissan dealer to do the same. It's taken Nissan more than a year to get around to it, but it finally seems that RapidGate may be dead. But what is Rapidgate? Why did it happen? And what can you expect if you're a Leaf owner with a prefixed car? Before I get into all of this, let's go back and remind ourselves exactly what Rapidgate is. When Nissan launched its second generation Leaf in late 2017, it drew quite a lot of criticism from electric car fans for deciding not to use active liquid-based thermal management to keep the car's 40 kilowatt hour battery pack warm. It was considered especially questionable since examples of the first generation Nissan Leaf, which also lacked an active thermal management system, suffered premature capacity loss, or reduced range if you prefer, as a consequence of being subjected to excessive heat in regions where summer temperatures stayed in the triple digits Fahrenheit, 37 degrees Celsius or above, for extended periods of time. Since I attended the 2018 official LEAF launch event in Japan, I had the chance to bring up the issue with battery cooling with one of Nissan's top engineers, who confidently told me that Nissan's in-house battery pack did not need any kind of active thermal management. Instead, I was told the new higher capacity battery pack was far better at heat dissipation and therefore temperature control, and thus Nissan did not need active cooling. The message? There was nothing to worry about. Fast forward a few months and it became very apparent how Nissan was apparently solving the issue of battery overheating by using super conservative battery management software. First spotted by owners in the UK, it appeared that 2018 Leafs were quite happy to charge from a rapid charging station at the expected 50 kilowatts or so rate, tapering the charge current down as the battery pack neared a full state of charge. That was, of course, normal for any electric car. But on subsequent rapid charging sessions, however, at least ones in which the car was driven at freeway speeds immediately after rapid charging before being then plugged into another rapid charging station, or instances where the car was driven and then left somewhere warm so the battery pack could not cool down, the car restricted rapid charging power dramatically. And that meant in charging times were doubled tripled or even quadrupled what the theoretical charge times should have been in ideal situations, which in turn meant that a long distance trip became agonizingly slow. At the time, it was assumed that Nissan was restricting charge power in order to ensure the battery pack didn't overheat. And while Nissan originally said there wasn't a problem, it's now developed this new software, which has been putting in new leafs made from around November onwards. While Nissan didn't acknowledge the change initially, I've talked to several people at the company who have said, yes, there has been a change, and yes, it's made rapid charging faster. I did have a late 2018 Leaf on review at the end of last year, but sadly, I didn't get to test a rapid charger on it. Those who have, however, say that the new software is far better and rapid charging multiple times a day is no longer a problem. Electrive has just reported after talking with Nissan that this new software now being installed in cars at the factory is about to be applied to all 2018 Leafs retrospectively via a dealer installed software update, something Nissan will likely be writing to customers about in a few weeks time. What's changed and what does it mean for customers' cars? Well, in terms of what's happened in the software update, it's clear that the charge curve, how much current is put into the battery pack and at what point in the charge cycle has been updated. What's not clear is if the software update replaces previously faulty software, one which perhaps was misreading actual temperatures, or if it's replacing software that was super cautious and has now been proven to be over cautious by continued testing. I'm still waiting to hear back from Nissan on specific details, so I will let you know when or if we hear back. The first, of course, is a possibility. It's conceivable that the programming of the car's battery management system was misinterpreting data from the sensors and thus reporting battery temperatures which were far higher than they actually were in real life. 
if we had to bet. That's what we think happened, because the rapid gate issue was discovered when outside temperatures were below freezing, yet the car was reporting super high temperatures inside its pack. If this is indeed the case, Nissan Software Fix would actually only be fixing a software coding bug. But if it's a change to the software after discovering that the previous software was just too conservative, well, that is a little more risky, since it suggests that battery packs in second generation Leafs could be about to get some heavier loads to deal with in terms of higher currents and thus temperatures, which could perhaps affect battery longevity. In a previous video, I said I'd not seen any noticeable battery degradation in 2018 Nissan Leafs yet, but Brian Henderson, hi Brian, recently reached out to remind me of a 2018 Leaf in Olympia, Washington, which now has a 93% state of health after nine months, suggesting there's a battery capacity loss of around 7%. It is driven fairly long distances, I think, and it's also important to note that battery degradation is fairly quick at the start of a battery pack's life, and then it slows down considerably around 90% capacity. However, that's still higher than the battery degradation on other EVs out there, so it'll be interesting to see if this degradation gets worse or stays the same after the update. Of course, whatever the outcome, I'll let you know if there's any noticeable difference between pre-update and post-update cars. But should you get the update done? Well, if it does indeed fixes the problem of slow charging and you're leasing, then I'd probably go for it if it was my car, as long-term risk is reduced. If I'd purchased the car and intended to keep it after its warranty expired, well, that might be different and I might be tempted to wait to see how others get on with their updated cars. That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell. And if you want to support the show, there are loads of links below to help you do just that. I'll be back soon with more episodes, but until then, keep evolving.